Yeah. I didn't see any signs. Not only is Melbourne a great place to fish, it's an awesome fishery, um, but it also has beautiful shorelines and parks, the incredible sunrise you see in the morning. It's definitely a great place to spend a day or two, that's for sure. Hey guys, Lester Whiteside here with That's a Good Fish. We're back out here at Melvern Lake in Melvern, Kansas. It's a beautiful fishery, as you can see. A lot of good scenery out here and also a lot of good fish. We're out here with Brian Andreka. He's gonna tell you a little bit about what he offers out here and on many other lakes around here. I'm with Kansas Angling Experience Guide Service. Um, Multi-species guide service uh, out here at Melvern, primarily just smallmouth bass. Uh, come across a few largemouth as well. Uh, fish Clinton Lake a lot for walleye and wiper. Um, but out here, we're, we're on the hunt for some fat fall brown fish. Yeah, we are. We're going to catch some fish. Make sure you guys stick around. That's a good fish. That's what we came here for. Brian put us on a good looking smallmouth here. Got some pretty coloration. Cut that on the Ned rig actually. Uh, we can talk about that later, but you might be wondering where they get the name smallmouth. If you, you know, check it out real good, it's because they have a much, much smaller dorsal fin. So hopefully there's some more in store there.
you know, we're doing our viewer question segment. You guys asked, we got answers. Here's what our first question is. It's kind of a simple question. It's from Dale in Texarkana. Where's Texarkana at? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't either. So, uh, Dale asks, I know you guys stayed in Lebo, Kansas. How did the water taste in Lebo, Kansas? Frank? Terrible. Next question. I can't even move him. <laughs> Take it. Oh, oh man, he just, yeah, I let him have that one. Alright guys, uh, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, 10 or 11 o'clock right now and these are four of our better fish we have right now. Some really nice smallies. Uh, three of them came on the Ned Rig, another one came on a swim bait. Um, look at the markings on them, beautiful fish. I was telling Frank Snagger I don't know of another lake around around the Missouri area, Joplin, where we're from, where you can come and catch a lot of smallmouth and good quality fish. Well, we're not done yet. Absolutely, yeah. We've still got quite a few more spots to go. So Stick around. Hey, sir. Uh, oh, hey, didn't you, see you there. Do you fish a lot here at Melbourne Lake? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I think you're kind of an expert here. I am. That's <laughs> What's what your say. name? I'm DJ. Oh, well, uh, I was kind of wanting to know just a few, I, I was wanting to know a little bit more about the history of Melbourne. I didn't know if you could tell me a little bit about that or not. Well, I'll tell you what, I got one fact that stands out to me. That is in the 1908, old Lewis C.C. Melbourne hand dug this lake. Hand dug? Hand dug. With a shovel and a pickaxe. Man, that was probably a lot of work. Did he actually ever get to fish this thing? Nope. Didn't ever see a drop of water in it. Man. Rest in peace. Yep. Brian hooked up to this fish we we knew it was a really good fish we just assumed it was a big small mouth but it turned out to be a large mouth um, and we weren't planning on catching any of those really but this turned out to be a really good fish
There he is. Oh my god! Dude, what do you got there? Holy crap! Dude, what are you doing? Oh, I got him. Big drum. I owe you him. I'm on, I'm on the board. Bam! Bam! Are you gonna, what are you gonna do? Make love to him or you get him in? It's a half hour show, guys. Guys, I just switched to it. The Eakins, 5 sixteenths, blue black, finesse jig, Man, you can't beat it. Look at this. First cast with it. Big old drum. I mean, there's there's nothing nothing better eating than this right here. You just take and you flay that just like you would old big crappie. A little bit of uh, crackers or Cheez-Its, Tabasco Cheez-Its. Man, I'm telling you what, you just can't beat it. This is good stuff right here. This is what we're here for right here, guys. Oh, mouth, mouth. I love you, man. I love you. He's going back. Chicken, pepperoni, and salami. Oh my goodness. Ugh. Not as dry as they come. Dude. Yep, real. <laughs> Nothing but bread. And just bread and uh, really good bread, high quality bread. Not that crap you get at Subway. You know, this is, <laughs> this is quality stuff. Good fish, baby. That's what it's all about. A brown fish. Kind of on a peanut butter and jelly worm. It's uh, Uncle Ned. Uncle Ned's Uncle Ned's rig. Good fish. It's been a tough day out here today. We uh, finally switched to finesse. I mean, we're. I mean, you're talking about a. I'm not even sure what ounce of jig head this is, but it's just a jig head with a piece of a old worm on it, and it's uh, that's what they're wanting. Uh, finally found something that they want to eat. So we're going at them the old fashioned way. All right guys, it's that time of the episode. We're gonna move into our viewer question. This one's from Tracy in Lebo, Kansas. Tracy wants to know, which is the better fighting bass? The smallmouth bass or the largemouth bass? And for that question, I'm gonna bring Brian up here and he's gonna answer that question for you, Tracy. You know, Tracy, thanks for having me, by the way. Yeah, no problem. Um, great question, but in my opinion, um, even though they're both excellent fighting fish, uh, I'm gonna go with the smallmouth. Um, even the small ones fight. They just uh, the tug is the drug, man, and they just they fight. They jump. Hookup ratios are a little bit less, but the big ones make it worth it. And that's what we're trying to do out here today: get on those big smallmouth. Maybe some light tackle. Doesn't really matter. They're gonna fight good on whatever kind of line you're using. So anytime you get to come down to whether it's to Melvern, any type of smallmouth fishery, you gotta do it because they're a lot of fun to catch. Stick around. Late in the day, I hooked a fish that was probably one of our biggest fish of the trip. Doubt it was a smallmouth, it was probably a big blue catfish, but I thought I had it all under control until... I got a pretty nice fish here. Hey Brian, on days like this when it's fishing gets tough, what, what, do you, uh, what do you recommend? Well, I mean, right now we're just in a classic post-frontal condition. Uh, high bluebird skies, just had quite a bit of rain yesterday and the day before. Um, basically, the only thing you can do right now is just finesse them. Um, they might be in like a lockjaw situation, so 
Just basically go through your entire arsenal, finesse, tube, square bill, um, swim bait, just gotta, you know, switch back and forth until we figure out what they want. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot! Good one? Oh. It's a white. <laughs> so there you go. This is, a, this is a little better fish here. This is a nice uh, Melbourne smallmouth here. Caught on the Ned rig. Uh, we got just got doubled up there. These last couple days, we've really caught a lot of different species of fish. and. Uh, yeah, he's a nice little guy. Look at that. Look at that belly. They are eating healthy here. Uh, man, what a nice fish. It's been a good couple days, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been great. Yep. Multi-species. We're going to let this guy go. We'll stick around. All right, folks. Uh, Frank Snagger here with Brian. Uh, he's going to go over just a few of the baits that we used today and uh, give you an idea of kind of how to work them and uh, how they worked out for us. So first off here, we've got your 4.3 inch swim bait. Um, this is a Bass Pro Shop Speed Shad. Um, big fan of these, uh, opposed to the Kitex swim baits, just because they last a lot longer and they're a little bit cheaper. Um, but rigged up on a Gamakatsu swim bait hook here with the corkscrew. Uh, works really well, especially when their main forge right now is shad. Um, it's, a very, it's a very snagless bait as well, as opposed to a crankbait. Um, so did pretty well, had a good couple fish on that one. Um, as far as the finesse game, uh, I've got a three and a half inch Bass Pro XPS tube. Um, really like the the green pumpkin gold flake in the sunshine because uh, we had high bluebird skies today. Um, but on any other cloudy day, might just be using straight green pumpkin. But just rigged up on a tube jig. Um, really like that finesse. It's really fun. And since it got really tough, we didn't have any wind. And again, high bluebird skies. Uh, the Ned Rig is the next go-to here, and pretty much that's just rigged up on a Zinkers 7-inch worm, um, which we've just cut in half on a mushroom head jig. Um, these mushroom head jigs I really like, they're made by Clayton Westgate with CNC baits. This is an eighth ounce, um, you can go up to a quarter if necessary, but I prefer the 16th to eighth ounce uh, just to stay out of the rocks and stuff, but it's a very simple bait. Um, this Elastec really allows you to just use the bait over and over and over and over. Uh, really simple system today. Unfortunately, didn't have the most ideal conditions, but we were, were able to, to find a lot of fish with those three simple baits right there. So, it's a great day. There's your tackle talk. We appreciate it, Ryan. Yep. Thanks for having me. Uh, this ends the second day of fishing out here. We came out back-to-back -back days, uh, both Bluebird Sky days, both a Ned Rig bite, but also we uh, landed quite a few good fish. This is our day two, uh, some of our bigger fish we caught today. Um, out here with Brian Andreka. anything else you want to say about what you have to offer for everyone? You know, depends on the time of year. Um, obviously we control, control a lot of things, but unfortunately not the weather and the barometer, but uh, there's a lot of good fish to be had. And once again, if you guys ever want to come get a bunch of smallmouth or just want to come catch a bunch of fish, Melbourne Lake's a great place to be, and this guy will put you on a lot of fish, and he's a lot of fun to fish with. Stinger, you got anything to say? No, oh, man. Great time. Had a blessing. Stick around for more episodes of That's a Good Fish. That's a good fish!
get that? If you would like to go on a trip with Brian Andreka and Kansas Angling Experience Guide Service, please call this number here or you can contact him at his Facebook page, facebook.com slash Kansas Angling Experience. When booking your trip, receive 10% off on your next guide trip when mentioning That's a Good Fish.